Good morning, good day, good afternoon. My name is Alexander Moroz and I'm the hardware enthusiast, overclocker, uh, web developer, software developer, graphic designer, and a photographer. And today I would like I would like introduce you to my GPU review for 2010. During the 2009 and 2010, I was closely watching the GPU and 3D video cards market. For those who doesn't know what is GPU, GPU is graphic processor unit and can be found in today's life on video cards for gaming or on the video cards for industrial cat purposes. In our everyday life, creation and innovation accelerates faster with every single day. For a few years straight, many companies demonstrated innovation in IT industry. Few of them, like AMD company, and used to be ATI and then was bought by AMD, so they re renamed the ATI and they took away the ATI brand and call it right now AMD and other uh, party NVIDIA demonstrated their interactive multimedia solutions such as brand new GPU chips that have showed us brilliant 3D acceleration and new multimedia experience and features and GPU computing abilities amazing today December 30th 2010 we are here to review those GPU innovations for 2010. It was brought to you by Alexander Moroz, researchers and experience. I have nine years of experience and um, working with video cards and overclocking those video cards and I had about 25 video cards during that nine years period. In the beginning of 2010, AMD company or XATI was leading uh, in GPU industry with their freshly released GPU that was innovated in the end of September of 2009 and gave a turbo lead for AMD company. Those GPU was in the first GPU on the planet Earth that were supporting DirectX 11 and tessellation by hardware for Windows 7. In the end of 2009, they conquered enthusiasts around the world with names like Radeon HD5870, Radeon HD5850. The king in performance for a single video card was Radeon HD5870. AMD also brought a new technology called iFinity that gave ability to connect three and up to six monitors at the same time and have split game rendering picture on those monitors. In the early 2010, Radeon HD5770 and Radeon HD5750 GPU chips were released as well. It was a great formula for those who were looking for price versus performance versus power consumption. It also was a great release for people with the low budget pockets with dreams to play 2010 games on maximum resolution up to 1920 by 1080 and highest visual details as possible. As you know, a lot of people around us like that. And also, personally, I bought myself a Sapphire Radeon HD5750 in January 1st, 2010. It was my, crazy, uh, my New Year present for me. Those cards were as powerful as GTX 260 192 cores and cost almost as twice less than GTX 260 and when overclocked Radeon HD 5750 was equal to GTX 260 192 cores and for a price tag of $139 
also AMD Radeons has those new features like Radeons in 5800 series so 5700 series has the same features as well as 5500 series have the same features and Nvidia didn't have those features at all in the beginning of 2010 AMD was king for the beginning of 2010 in GPU market because their chips were fastest and the best when it comes to performance versus price tag versus power consumption however Nvidia had a bad start they delayed their GF100 chips and it played a bad joke with Nvidia later on they did not have enough those chips by the beginning of 2010 so production of GeForce GTX 480 and the smaller sister GTX 470 and just GTX 470 were delayed big time and then I believe GTX 465 was like after GTX 470 even if their GF100 GPU chips was released in the second quarter of 2010 they did not bring the expectation from a consumers and it was a disappointment to GeForce consumer because of high level of noise and huge price tag and high power consumption the fastest single video cards was a dual GPU Radeon HD 5970 by AMD again the leadership was on the side of rats or AMD side Nvidia was following behind on second place with their GF100 GeForce GTX 480 and third place was again AMD with Radeon HD 5870 that was losing to Nvidia GeForce GTX 480 by a tiny bit also after release of Fermi GF100 chips AMD shifted the battle for the leadership to the middle end market GPU solution as we know the most buyers out there are in the low end and middle end GPU solutions market Nvidia has no other choice but to follow that battle and came out with their middle end GPU solutions so for the middle of 2010 Bell has shifted into middle end GPU solution market both sides had a good solution to win that market over AMD has their Radeon HD 5850 Radeon HD 5770 Radeon HD 5750 and freshly released Radeon HD 5830 that actually was a big failure Radeon HD 5830 power consumption was about the same as Radeon HD 5870 but the performance mark was lower than 5850 useless because it took a lot of watts to work it also generated a lot of heat and noise so AMD dropped that idea because coins was unnecessary to keep that card and consumers didn't like it because the price tag and uh, heat and noise and not awesome performance however some cards can be found today for sale like those Radeon HD 5830 at Newegg but in low quantities and I'm strongly suggest you to stay away from Radeon HD 5830 just go ahead and stay away from it it's a bad card, terrible if we will look at NVIDIA in the, in the middle of 2010 in July 2010 to be exact NVIDIA released their solution called GeForce GTX 460 based out of GF104 GPU chip and later on they released 
GeForce GTS 450 based off a G GF106 GPU chip. They have no option but to fight back the middle end GPU solution from, uh, from AMD. Otherwise, they would be a big loser for 2010 in the middle end market. GeForce GTX 465. GTX 460 and GTS 450. Those NVIDIA chips put up a good fight against the AMD solutions in the middle of 2010 and in the face of GeForce GTX 460 was a winner in the performance level but got coins in the power consumption and price tag for about $240 in the middle of 2010. So in the middle of 2010 Radeon HD 5750 was the best solution money versus performance versus power consumption versus heat and the price tag was $139 let's look at the low budget fight during the 2010 so right now we're gonna look at the low budget and in the low budget segment, AMD was clearly leader for the 2010. They demonstrated a nice scale for low budget ideas on a GPU 5500 series that was ready to bring latest features such as such are DirectX 11, Affinity, Crossfire, low power consumption, low heat, low level of noise, etc. So basically it was a totally green products that have ability to play light games or to play games for 2010 but on low graphics settings with playable frame rates and low resolutions. AMD done their job right just well. Even if Nvidia released their GeForce GT 430 with about the same level of power consumption features and about the same price range of $69 in the end of 2010 GeForce GT 430 was losing to Radeon HD 5570 on a performance level so I would like to say that low budget AMD was clearly leader for 2010 they just won the GPU market of low end for 2010 Alright, let's talk and uh, let's look at the end of 2010. In the end of 2010, NVIDIA fixed their mistakes with the Fermi revised architecture and they introduced GeForce, GTX 580 and 570. By releasing those GPU chips, NVIDIA clearly became a leader and took a leadership away from AMD. GTX 580 was faster than GTX 480 and 580 made less noise. Even 5970 dual GPU video card by AMD cannot outperform freshly released GeForce GTX 580. However, the price tag uh, for NVIDIA GPU solution was too high, like around $500 and more than that. So AMD came out with a good solution instead of beating up the NVIDIA again, they decided to lose the leadership in the fastest GPU during the end of 2010 after one year of success in leadership the fastest GPU on the market and AMD released Radeon HD 6950 and HD 6970 to replace the Radeon HD 5830 epic failure and 